job is to get the dough out of the fridge, unwrap it and split it into portions. Now however many grams of flour you've used, divide by 100 and that's your portions. So I use 600 grams, so I'm going to divide it into six pieces. More or less, even. You'll find that once it's come out, it's actually much, much more pliable than when it first went in. Okay, so that's your six pieces ready to go. You need to then just make sure they're in a vague, sort of rectangular, flattened rectangular sausage shape so that they'll feed into your rollers without too much effort. And when that's done, and they're all to one side, make sure they're floured both sides, put them out of the way and attach the rollers to your KitchenAid. Your next job is to attach the rollers. Now you need to unscrew this little screw here to remove the cap and the KitchenAid is clever because it actually uses the motor that's housed in here to, and it uses this as a power hub. You'll notice there's a little black uh, knob on there which fits into this little hole here. You just need to make sure those are lined up. So, guess it, give it a little wiggle on the way in, push it until it's lined up straight, everything slots together, and then tighten the bolt. To change the settings for the rollers themselves to make the uh, pasta thicker or thinner, you just pull out the knob at the end and twist it round to the design number at the top, making sure it's clicked firmly back into place. So I'm going to twist it out and pull it, set it to one at the top to begin. So, checked it's sitting on at the top. I've got my pieces all into a sensible size. And the next thing to do is just feed them through on setting one, making sure they're coated at both sides in flour. So I'm going to turn the KitchenAid to power two. You can go on power one if you're a bit less confident. Very gently, feed it in till it catches and guide it through the rollers. You don't need to do any pushing or pulling, it'll do it by itself. When that's done, you need to dust both sides in flour again. Fold it in half, push it down, and do the pearl process again. I tend to do this a couple of times after folding and then I'll refold and give it another go. Always making sure to dust both sides in flour before you push it through again. That little pop you heard was a little air bubble coming out. Run it through two or three times. Fold it a couple just to strengthen the pasta. before moving on to the next setting. So I've done exactly the same, uh, folding and rolling several times on setting two. And I'm now going to change that to setting three, just so that we can just make the pasta thinner now. Dust it in flour. You don't need to do any folding at all this time. Just feed it through and let the rolling thin it out. Don't worry if it gets caught a little bit on the way through. You're going to do this three or four times, so there's lots of uh, opportunities 
for it to uh, iron out any wrinkles, so to speak. You can see already it's getting much longer as we go. Keep making sure it's got a good dusting of flour, otherwise you're going to find it stuck in the machine and very difficult to clean out. I'm going to turn this round to four. It's going to be the last time. Finished it is. Make sure again you've got a good dusting of flour. Really, it's not worth letting this stick. You put all the effort in to making it this thin. Make sure you've got a good coating. Setting four, speed two, and off we go for our last few times. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because you're dealing with really long pieces of pasta. And what you don't want to do is what I did on the last round and have to start again if they get too wrinkly. So make sure they're fed through gently, they're fairly straight and you can collect them the other side. And this time just going to let the pasta collect underneath, ready 